Dr. Amarendra Mishra was the former head of statistics and dean of science in Patna University. More than 100 of national and international research papers are widely published in different journals across the world. His passion for teaching, dedication, commitment are highly appreciable among student. With serving 42 years in teaching and holding enormous roles in statistics, the name is enough for his introduction. The word statistics has come from the Latin word status or Italian word statistica or the German word statistic or the French word statistic, all meaning information useful to the state, such as information about sizes of the population, products, armed forces, revenue, resources, etc. In history, Evidences are found that ancient kings used to appoint accountants to collect detailed data about people and resources of the states. Liu Ban, an early Chinese emperor, considered statistics so important that he made his prime minister in charge of statistics. This became tradition and continued for long in China. As early as in 2000 BC, according to the evidences found in history, conducting censuses was in practice in China during the time of Hesia dynasty. Roman Empire were some of the first states to extensively gather data on the size of the empire's population, geographical area and wealth. Servius Tullius, a king of Rome, established Roman census to keep record of people's property for taxation purposes and for knowing the number of persons bodily fit for fighting. The word census itself has been derived from the Latin word sincere, which means to tax. Caesar Augustus in 5 BC started census for the entire Roman Empire. The birth of statistics is often dated to 1662, when John Grant, along with William Petty, developed early human statistical and census methods that provided a framework for modern demography. He produced the first life table giving probabilities of survival at each age. His book, Natural and Political Observations Made Upon the Bills of Mortality, used analysis of the mortality roles to make the first statistically based estimation of the population of London. The Belgian mathematician Adolphe Quetlet collected all sorts of social data and described the frequency distribution in terms of the normal law. 
which he called the law of accidental causes. He was so influenced by statistics that he urged Charles Babbage to found the Statistical Society of London. It was Quetlet and his students who gave the modern concepts of economics and demography such as gross national product, rates of development and growth, and population growth. It appears that uh, statistics got recognized as a science when it was included as a section in the British Association for the Advancement of Science and Royal Statistical Society was founded in 1834. Carl Pearson whose period was from 1857 to 1936, an English mathematician and biostatistician, founded the world's first university department of statistics at the University College London in 1911. At the University College, London, he was teaching graphical methods which formed the basis of his interest in statistics. He emphasized the importance of quantification for biology, medicine and social science and made statistics as his personal scientific mission. Influenced by the Francis Galton's idea to apply a statistical reasoning to the study of biological evolution, Pearson became devoted to the development of a mathematical theory of evolution. He played a leading role in the development of a statistical theories. In 1901, with Galton and Walter Weldon, founder of Biometry, he founded the journal Biometrica as the first journal of mathematical statistics and biometry. His work underpins many of these classical statistical methods which are in common use today, such as product moment correlation coefficient, method of moments of estimation, Pearson's system of continuous curves, chi-square, measures of skewness and kurtosis, and many others. After Carl Pearson, R. A. Fisher pioneered the next phase of statistics. His two famous books, Statistical Methods for Research Workers, published in 1925 and the design of experiments published in 1955 sorry in 1935 were found 
to have great values which gave directions to the evolvement of many new branches of statistics. In 1919, Rothmasted Experimental Station, where he started a major study of the extensive collections of data recorded over many years. This resulted in a series of reports under the general title Studies in Crop Variation. In 1930, he published The Genetical Theory of Natural Selection where he applied statistics to evolution. During the second and the third decades of the last century, Fisher enriched statistics by his extraordinary rich ideas. He developed various exact Sample, small sample tests based on the assumption of normality. Influenced by R. A. Fisher, many other statisticians of that period, such as Hotling, R. C. Bose, Essen Roy and S.S. Bates contributed a lot to the exact sampling theory. The emergence of a very important branch of applied statistics, design of experiments, was due to the great scholarly insight of R. A. Fisher. Fisher initiated the principles of design of experiments through his well-known Lady Teacup experiment and elaborated on his studies of analysis of variance. Fisher was a statistical genius. He had a very strong imaginative power. Most of the methodology proposed by him were based on his intuition. The concepts of consistency efficiency, sufficiency, and the method of maximum likelihood are some of the concepts in estimation which makes one to believe what a genius Fisher was. India also had a long history of collecting statistics and using them for efficient administration. The great treatise in economics, Arthasastra by Cotillia, which is normally attributed to 321 to 296 BC during Maurya period, had a detailed description of the system of data collection 
relating to the agricultural population and economic censuses in villages and towns during that period. In his famous book, Ayn E. Akbari, Abul Fajal, who belonged to the court of the great Mughal emperor Akbar, around 1590 AD, has given the details of the several government departments including the system of legalized measurements, land classification, and crop yields by season among others. After the decline of Mughal rule in India, the Britishers ruled India for more than two centuries and during this period they strengthened the data collection system to a great extent. During their regime, the statistical development was geared towards administration, tax collection, revenue, trade, and other related activities. They conducted several censuses. In 1807, a survey on the provinces was done covering an area of 60,000 square miles and 15 million people who gave a detailed information on topography of each district and the condition of the people there with their religion, customs, etc. The first systematic attempt to ascertain the whole population in India by actually counting heads was made between 1867 and 1872. But it was not the synchronous census, nor it was for the whole country. The decennial system of census was started in 1861 by the Britishers, which is still continuing in the country. After the independence of India in 1947, the country felt an urgent need for a statistical framework suitable for economic and social development. Professor P.C. Mahalnobis pioneered the statistical movement in the country for its economic development. A central statistical unit was set up under his technical guidance, which was later in 1951 was known as Central Statistical Organization. This organization was set up mainly to coordinate statistical works 
done in the various ministries and government agencies and to liaison with international statistical organizations. In 1954, the National Income Committee recommended that the National Income Unit be transferred to the CSO, that is Central Statistical Organization, from the Finance Ministry. And since then, the estimation of national income has been being done by the CSO. National Sample Survey Organization was established with its four divisions, namely Survey Design and Research, Field Operations, Data Processing, and economic analysis in order to improve the quality and fill up the gaps in statistical information. Another great statistical revolution that took place in independent India was in the field of large-scale sample survey. For the first time, the large-scale survey covering the whole Bengal of about 50,000 square miles was done by Mahal Nobis in 1941. He was the person who used the concept of pilot surveying, optimum survey, and interpenetrating network of subsamples to the subject of survey sample. Without uh, mentioning the name of the Indian Statistical Institute, the evolution of statistics in India would perhaps be incomplete. The Indian Statistical Institute was founded by P.C. Mahalnobis as a society on December 17, 1931, and it introduced Bachelor of Statistics, P.Start, Master of Statistics, M.Start and the PhD degree program in 1960 after the institute was declared as an institute of national importance by the government of India. The Indian Statistical Institute has made fundamental contributions to the subject of statistics. No treatment of such topics as estimation, maximum likelihood estimation, statistical quality control, linear models, and many others can be complete without any appropriate coverage of work done at the Indian Statistical Institute. The contribution to the development of statistics in India by another institute 
Indian Agricultural Statistics Research Institute IASRI is also quite substantial. In the recognition of the contributions of PC Mahalnobis to the statistical development in India, his birthday, 29th of June, is officially celebrated as National Statistics Day every year. So far, the teaching of statistics is, in India is concerned. Calcutta University is the first university in the country to open a separate postgraduate department of statistics in 1941. The Department of Statistics, Calcutta University, is considered as one of the pioneering departments in the world. That time, apart from Mahalnobis, the members of the faculty included well-known statisticians like R.C. Bose and S. N. Roy. The second department of statistics in the country was started at Bombay University in 1948 and after a few months, the third was started at the Kerala University. Patna University is the fourth oldest university in the country to start postgraduate teaching in statistics in 1949. The Indians have a great contribution in the field of statistics. They have contributed a lot in extending the frontiers of statistics, both theoretical and applied. In fact, they have a major role in bringing statistics to a stage where we see it today. BLS Prakasharao, C. Chakravarti, C. R. Rao, D. Basu, D. B. Lahiri, Kantilal Mardia, KCS Pillai, K.R. Nayar, J.K. Ghosh, P.C. Mahalnubis, P.K. Singh, P.V. Sukhatma, R.C. Bose, R. R. Bahadur, Shiva Atreya, S. S. Srikhande, Sudipto Banarji, V. G. Panse, V. S. Hujur Bajar, S. N. Roy, R. Some. among the great Indian statistics giants of all times, among many others. Thank you.